Hi, this is Chris Kirkpatrick, the safe bet money guy teaching the secrets of the wealthy to the movers and shakers of the world so they can avoid the stock market casino and gamble proof their lives. Now, in this video, I'm going to talk about a pretty controversial topic, talking about life insurance and how Dave Ramsey's actually right that life insurance is not a good investment. However, I'm going to say at the onset of this that it's a really complex topic but I promise if you can bear with me through this, it'll make a lot more sense. And if it's something you're either considering or you've contemplated or needed life insurance in the past, you really should take the time to watch this. I promise it will change your perspective on everything, no matter who you listen to currently. So before I get into all that, though, I want to just take a moment to kind of introduce myself, tell you who I am. Uh, I am a former internationally ranked top 100 poker player. I see the world in spreadsheets. I'm a numbers guy, super analytical and, and systems operated. And that is kind of what led me into the financial world. I got into the financial world and actually built the second largest team in the country for a Fortune 1000 financial firm. I really taken that experience. I left, I went on my own, I created my own firm and I've bec become really a financial security expert helping people. And I think, you know, that has led me to writing my book and I've, I've written information helping people with rebuilding their credit and managing their debt and building wealth and investing in the most effective, efficient way possible for them. And ultimately, you know, the, the thing that really matters to me the most is family. And my daughter tells me that I am the best dad in the world. So to me, that is the most important thing. So that's my kind of claim to fame at this point in time. So before before I get into anything, I want to talk about the main topics I want to cover in this and why is there so much confusion around life insurance and why are Dave Ramsey and life insurance agents constantly at each other's throat and always battling about what life insurance is? I want to talk about why Dave is right. But I also want to talk about where Dave gets it wrong and some of the things that he just doesn't know what he doesn't know or he just doesn't communicate what he doesn't know. And where ultimately does life insurance play in your finances? How do you use life insurance as a tool to get to where you want to go? And it's all about perspective. And ultimately, financial products are just tools and you got to bring the right tool to the job and you got to know where you want to go to figure out what tool you need to get to where you want to go. So first and foremost, one more time, I want to reiterate, life insurance is not an investment, but it is an asset. The question is, what kind of asset is it? The challenge is most people are constantly comparing life insurance to stocks or mutual funds. But nothing could be further from the truth because there is no risk with life insurance if you structure it properly. However, while there's not risk, there's also not as much upside. So I think people are simply comparing life insurance to the wrong financial products or the wrong financial tool, if you will. For instance, most people agree that you should have at least six months of expenses in a safe account that you have access to in case of emergency or opportunity. Now, I would suggest that you need more than six months, but that's not something I can cover in this video. If you want to hear about that stuff, you're going to have to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So I want to be clear about something right now, though. You are not going to find any financial product in the world that is going to solve your problems. As I said, financial products are simply tools. The key is you need the right tool for the right job. My question to you is, what do you want your money to do for you? So I want to run through a few options for you. And while life insurance is not a good investment, I do think before I get into anything else that it's key for me to point out briefly where Dave Ramsey gets it wrong. You see, the number one reason that I see people fail to achieve their goals with their money is that their expectations are simply too high as to what their money is going to do for them. And Dave suggests that you can expect a rate of return of 12% on your mutual funds. I'm going to call BS on this one because all you need to do is look at the research to realize that that is far from accurate. I can show you the statistics that show that the average return people receive with their mutual funds is less than 1% when you count for inflation. That is a far, far cry 
from Dave's 12% promise. I also want to suggest to you that the stock market is no place for your money unless you understand how stocks work inside and out. Now, full disclosure here, I do want to tell you, I sell life insurance. However, that has nothing to do with my opinion on this matter. You see, I used to sell mutual funds, but I stopped selling them because the more I learned about mutual funds, the more I despise them. And by the time this video is over, I think you're going to have a hard time disagreeing with me. And I promise you, I will only be presenting facts and guarantees. I'll also throw in a strategy to show you how you can leverage this for yourself. First, as I said, we need to stop comparing life insurance to investment vehicles and start comparing life insurance to your bank account. So let's take a look at the performance of your bank account. The average rate of return of somebody in a money market account is a tenth of a percent. So basically what that means is you're losing money to inflation. You are going broke slowly if you store any of your money in a bank account. What that means is because inflation is going up faster than the rate of return you're getting on your money, your money can actually buy you less and less and less year after year because you're underperforming. The only benefit to having your money in a bank account is control and safety of that money, meaning it's guaranteed with the FDIC insurance to, to not lose as long as you keep the amount of money in your bank account under the FDIC limits and you have control of that money. You have access to that money in case you need it for any reason, whether it's opportunity or protection. So the question is, what are your alternatives? Yes, it's life insurance. And I know that may sound crazy, but I promise if you stick with me here, I will prove it. Now, Dave Ramsey and Susie Orman absolutely hate life insurance because of the fees that people pay to have it. So what I want to do is I want to break down and go through an actual illustration. This is an actual illustration that shows what happens in your account when you put your money into a properly structured life insurance contract. Now, I want to give you the specs here on this real quick. It's a 38-year-old. It's a male. He's a non-smoker. We're talking about $15,000 a year in savings for 10 years and a $50,000 dump in each of the first two years. So that's 65,000, the 50 plus 15 each of the first two years and 15,000 a year after that from year three to 10 paid up after 10 years, meaning we reduce the death benefit after 10 years and it's completely paid up after 10 years, meaning no more expenses, no more fees, no more out of pocket. It's all guaranteed just the same way, essentially, that your bank account is. But I'll even take it another level and say it's more secure than your bank account is historically. And the results for the life insurance contract after year 20 is you wind up with over $386,000 in cash plus a death benefit. I'll get into that later. Now, if you were to put your money in a bank account with security, which you have in a life insurance contract, with guarantees, which you have in a life insurance contract, with liquidity, which you have in a life insurance contract, which, you know, yeah, you lose a little bit of the liquidity for the first couple of years, but I'll, I'll get into that in a second. You notice here that after 20 years, we're talking about a $90,000 difference. Now, if I told you, you had to give up liquidity, access, not that you're losing that money, but you have to give up liquidity of that money in the short period of time over the next couple of years. But after 20 years, you'd have an extra $90,000 plus other benefits and more guarantees. Is that something you'd be interested in? And just think that is just as much safety, if not more so than your bank, because I can show you through history where more banks have failed than life insurance companies. So I mentioned that there were other benefits as well. Now, if you die, if you look back at the example of the illustration I showed you, you die in the first 10 years, you actually leave $2 million in life insurance in this situation, give or take. There's actually a little lower at the beginning and it goes above $2 million by year 10. Now, Dave Ramsey will point out that you don't get both, right? You don't get to keep the cash value on top of the death benefit, but my 
counter to that is that you don't get any death benefit when your money's in a bank account, right? You don't get any death benefit. On top of that, you get what we call accelerated benefit riders, meaning if you become chronically or terminally ill, you can actually accelerate your death benefit and receive that money on a tax-free basis to give yourself uh, medical treatment or to pay for long-term care facilities or in-home care or whatever you need that money for. You can take it you could take the money to pay for a vacation for you and your family if that's something that really gets you going. If, if you know that that's what you want to do and you just want to enjoy life on the way out, you can use that money for whatever you want. Remember, I said earlier, no product will solve your financial problems. This is simply a storage tank for your money. And if you need to keep your money somewhere, if you want to keep your safe money somewhere, you want to make sure that you find the most safe, effective, efficient, guaranteed vehicle possible. And this is it. So to show this, I want to compare a scenario to you. I want to show you how you can use your life insurance account as your private bank. And I want to show you that paying cash is no longer king like a lot of people would tell you it is. But you also don't want to pay interest to the banks either. You want to make sure that you're paying that interest to yourself, right? That's the key. You want to pay it to yourself. Now, I'm going to show you how this all works here. So bear with me. So let's take a look at the two options here. You see column on the left, the column on the left, and the column on the right. Now, the column on the left, that's paying cash. That's saving your money in a regular bank account. And the two scenarios that I'm going to show you are saving cash in your bank, buying real estate with cash, right? So you save up and you buy an investment property cash, i.e. cash is king. You save the cash flow from the real estate, right? You retake the cash flow from that real estate and you put it back in your bank account and you use that money to buy up another property or an investment. And what I want to do is I want to compare that financial position and see what it looks like after 20 years. Now, on the right hand side, you save your cash in your abundance bank. That's our term for life and uh, properly structured life insurance policy. And what you're going to do is instead of paying cash for that, you're going to take a loan against your life insurance policy and you're going to use that loan to buy a property. Now, when you get when you receive income from that property, rather than putting that back uh, into your bank, as you would if you paid cash for it on the, in the traditional mindset, you're going to use that cash flow to pay back your loan that you took against your life insurance policy. And once again, we're going to take a look at where we are after 20 years. Now, you can see here that when a person uses the traditional way of banking and they save their money in a bank and then they pay cash for a property. This doesn't have to be a property, by the way. I'm just using this as an example of any type of investment that's going to be a positive cash flow investment. So real estate just made the most sense because we have access to a program and uh, it's just something I deal with more frequently than anything else. And when you save that money in a bank account, what happens is after year three, I just wanted to show taking $75,000 out and buying a rental property. They put in 65, 65 the first two years and then 15 for year three through 10. And I did that in this example just because I wanted to keep it the same as with a life insurance contract example that, I, that I'm showing you. And I just wanted to keep it apples to apples. And you can see here that they paid cash for the house, so there's no liability. They have some taxes and insurance and management fees for property management. But their rental income, that's their net rental income. That's their net profit on this. And I am using an exact example of a specific property in Kansas City, Missouri that we have access to uh, through a program that we have, like I said. Now, you can see if they do this, they've paid, they have the asset, they have the house, it's kicking out the rental income. And what that's going to do is at the end of year 20, after all is said and done, that their initial $250,000 investment over the first 10 years is going to be worth $372,000 after 20 years. A key thing to note, however, 
is that you also have your rental property paid for, right? So you could sell that for extra cash or just keep taking the positive cash flow as income. You just have to take that as it comes at you and figure out what the best solution or option is for you at that point in time. Because remember, as time goes on, rental incomes will inflate the same way as everything else in the world inflates. And you have to take that into consideration. So if the house did double in value by year 20, let's say it's $150,000 in value. You add that to the $372,000 and you have created that $520,000, we'll say, out of a $250,000 investment. So you put two fifty dollars in over your first 10 years and you turn that into five twenty. dollars That's pretty good. And while I would take putting your money in the bank and doing what I just showed you over investing in stocks any day of the week, I want to show you an example using a properly structured life insurance contract. I've blacked out the personal information on here because it's an exact example. This is a specific example that I've used with a client and I wanted to show you how this works and how powerful it is. Now, before I do that, let's get into the specs. Let's talk about how this works. I'm using the same exact life insurance specs as I used earlier. It's a 38 year old male, non-smoker, healthy, and instead of paying cash, what I've done is you could see the same parameters here. Year three, you take a loan of 75,000 bucks against your abundance bank. Now, what happens then is instead of taking that cash flow and saving in a bank, you take that cash flow and you repay the loan. The reason we take a loan is because when you take a loan, you don't interrupt the compounding of your money, the interest compounding on your money, because you're taking a loan against the value of your money. You're not actually withdrawing the money from your account. And that's something, if you want to learn more about, that's another video. And you can just subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure you find the video on that. And I'll even try to put a link up here if I can and but make sure you check that out if you're interested in learning more about how that works and the thing is cash keeps growing while you pay it back you can see here under the surrender cash value the cash surrender value i should say it's all highlighted in blue there i got a box around it in blue just to show you kind of like that's the column to kind of think about that's the money that you have access to and as you pay the loan back you rehab access to that money for leverage or opportunity or protection to make sure that you're you're protected now you can see that the loan is paid back in year 14 right that's a key the loan is paid back in year 14 you no longer have to put money in after year 10 to this contract it's completely paid up you have all the life insurance that you have there, $820,000 starting in year 11 on top of the $265,000 in cash value at year 11. That keeps growing as you pay it back. And by year 20, you have $856,000 in debt benefit plus or plus $384,000 in cash value. Now, if you, if you notice, the cash value here is more than the $372,000 that you had with the banking the key there to notice is that you have now even though you have an extra let's say twelve thousand dollars in cash value you also have an extra eighty four hundred dollars in cash flow on top of that from year 14 to 20 right which means you even though that's the case you still have more cash you have an extra fifty five thousand almost fifty six thousand dollars in cash flow which if you took that and you put it into the policy, it would, into the abundance banking contract into your policy, it would perform even better you, you than the $440,000 total, but it just shows that you have leverage. You can use that extra $8,404 a year from your 14 on. You can use that as a lifestyle increase from a cash flow perspective, or if you want to keep apples to apples with the banking alternative to the to using your life insurance contract as your banking alternative, you can see it's completely leveraged up in your, you have more security, more guarantees, more opportunity, more control, and you have more money. And isn't that what you want? You have more money. And 
The thing is, on top of that, the rental property is paid for, just as we said in the other example. So in the other example, while you, you've you created $520,000 in wealth, in this example, you've created $590,000 in wealth. On top of that, you have accelerated benefit riders and you have an extra $500,000 in debt benefit almost on top of your cash value. Now, Dave Ramsey says you don't get to keep all $856,000. Well, in the other example, how much life insurance do you have keeping your money in a bank? You don't have any, right? You just don't have any. And that is the key. On top of this, you don't you you have accelerated benefit riders where if you become chronically or terminally ill, you have access to that death benefit before you die. And that is massive massively important, right? That that saves you money on other insurances that you may not be able to afford. And while it's not an alternative, it's not a a substitute for long-term care because it can't do everything that long-term care does for you. It is a way that you can have access to a- extra cash if you can't afford long-term care insurance. Plus, the key things here to think are is after you're 10, and beyond is you keep access to your money through loans or withdrawals the whole time, right? That's how you access your money. We coach people how to manage that and manage their policies. The key thing here to know is you have a 4% guarantee on the cash value. Any of the cash value that you have in the contract, you have a 4% guarantee. And so after year 10, when we do a reduce paid up, it means it is completely paid up. You have a 4% guarantee on all the cash value in your policy year 10 and on. That is a 40 times greater return than your average bank account. Think about that. A 40 times greater return than your average bank account. Why, why would you keep your money in a normal bank account knowing this information? So all on top of this, on top of everything, if it doesn't get any better, it does. All or a portion of the money that you have in this account is protected from lawsuits in most states, unlike your bank account, which is not protected in most situations. So let me reiterate, Dave is right. Life insurance is a terrible investment. So I'm gonna go through some really interesting things. I'm gonna cover three major topics, but one of the things I can promise you is that if you stick through to the end of this webinar, my biggest promise to you is that you will never look at money the same. You will never think about money the same. You will never save the same. You will never invest your money in the same way. Every action, every action you have around money will be impacted from this day forward simply because of the information that you will receive in this webinar. And I know that sounds like a bold statement, but I'm going to cover the history of the stock market. There's a big void in the history of the stock market, in the history of the economy. I mean, we live at this point in time right now where even people, even students who are going through college, getting their degree in economics, are not learning the history of the stock market, are not learning the history of our economy, and are not learning not just what happened, but why did it happen? What factors impacted what happened to happen? And it's scary because we're repeating a lot of the same things. And so taking that into consideration, the next thing I get into is the banking principles. And ultimately, I'm going to, that's a really quick little kind of punchy topic for me to get into, but there's a couple basic principles about banking that you need to understand because if you understood these principles and if you understood how you can then take those principles and create your own banking system in your own personal life and leverage those principles to create more abundance in your life, I'm telling you, you can achieve everything that you want to achieve in life with by taking less risk, have more predictability, and you get to where you want to go, and you literally you get your money working for you, and that's what it's all about. It's simply a holding tank for your money to keep it protected until you find the right investment that makes sense to you. And you can see here that if you're looking to have cash flow real estate as part of your investment portfolio, there really is no better way to accomplish purchasing that cash flow real estate than using your abundance bank. If you're wondering where you can buy cash flow real estate that actually cash flows positively in month one, email me because it can happen. I know where I live in Vermont or where a lot of people I work with in California live, it's 
virtually impossible to buy cash flow positive real estate month one. Most people have to wait a couple years before they actually have positive cash flow. You don't have to do that. You just have to know where to find the real estate. We have access to it. We have a program. We have a relationship with a guy who is just amazing at doing this, completely trustworthy, and I'd love to introduce you to him. So email me, chris at life180.com about that. Or if you have any other questions, I'd love to get into any of this with you. But I hope I've dispelled some of the myths around this stuff and cleared up why both people are right. They just don't interpret it properly. Dave Ramsey is right. Life insurance is not an investment. However, life insurance people, what they're really trying to say, I think, is life insurance is a better alternative to a bank account. Now, if you do this, I want to make sure that you're aware. Don't just do it with anybody. And I work with people all over the place. You don't have to work with me. Find somebody who knows how to structure a life insurance contract 100% in your best interest. And usually what that means is it means a huge, huge commission cut for the life insurance agent. So make sure you do your due diligence and make sure you find an agent who can set you up properly and you can go from there. I hope all this information was helpful. I hope it was informative and I hope it opens your eyes to some different perspectives about how you can use life insurance as a tool for you to accomplish all of your financial goals. Until next time, guys, live abundantly, live efficiently, live life 180, and please, please, please click below and subscribe to my YouTube cha channel if you find any of this stuff beneficial. Thanks a lot. God bless.